We've been talking about holistic medicine on the homestead, and so today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite herbs on the homestead, um, which isn't necessarily for my animals, but more so for us. So today, we're going to talk about peppermint. peppermint and spearmint. There is a difference. Um, I'll show you this is a big spearmint plant. Its leaves are much bigger than peppermint um, and the smell is definitively different as well. Now this is a peppermint plant and this is a lot smaller and to me it's a little bit sweeter than spearmint. Spearmint kind of smells more like a plant, but taste is really pungent. Where peppermint, it smells more like peppermint, and the taste is really pungent as well. Um, peppermint has menthol in it though, so it has that more cooling taste on your tongue than spearmint does. Spearmint is more um, like what's in gum. And it definitely has more of a plant flavor than um, an actual minty flavor, but it definitely has mint as well. Spearmint is probably better used if you're looking for just a little bit of mint rather than a lot of mint flavor, where peppermint is, is really, um, it's, it's loud. It's a very loud herb. Um, peppermint's a little bit more stocky, but Spearmint is a lot taller. This grows up while peppermint grows out. Both peppermint and spearmint can be grown in containers like I have here, or they can actually be added to your garden as well. Um, it's suggested that you can plant herbs um, that have an aroma like peppermint and spearmint and rosemary and things that have that pungent smell. Um, you can add them to your garden to ward off uh, caterpillars and other kinds of bugs that are really kind of distracted by that smell. Now, I'm going to go down a list of things that benefit you when it comes to peppermint. Um, I have it in my handy dandy herb book, and basically what I do in this is I doodle, um, and I write down important information in my, in my herb book um, that helps me remember things. So I have a page for each thing, and I kind of just go down and I write bullet points so that it's something I can reference back to, especially if it's something we use a lot here. Um, there are 25 different species of mint, and peppermint is, of course, in the mint family, as a spearmint. <clears throat> um, these two, spearmint and peppermint, are your most popular in gardening. You can find others. Um, some are native, some grow wild. It just depends on where you're located. Peppermint is actually a natural hybrid. So it's um, a hybrid between watermint and spearmint. So you could say that it's like spearmint, but it does have a lot of different properties and healing properties than spearmint does. Um, as I was saying before, spearmint is a little bit less pungent than peppermint. I feel like peppermint is probably more effective than spearmint in many ways. As I stated before, peppermint has menthol in it. It also has um, rosemary in it, which is also in rosemary. Um, and that helps reduce inflammation. So a lot of the things that peppermint can help have to do with inflammatory issues. So um, sinuses that are inflamed or your digestive tract that is inflamed, sore throats that are inflamed, we have bees buzzing. <laughs> Anything that um, needs something to counteract inflammation, peppermint is probably my first go-to herb for that. Now inside the household, let's start there. Um, a lot of people use peppermint to clean with. Now um, I, I can actually would put the peppermint itself crushed up in vinegar. Um, that's what I clean my house with. Rather than using the actual peppermint essential oil, uh, I think by now you guys have figured out I use essential oils sparingly. These, this plant itself is just as effective as the essential oil. The essential oil is just a more concentrated form of it. Peppermint in this form does just as well in a bottle of white vinegar. Um, crushed up and spray it. You can wash windows. You can clean your house in it. Vinegar sanitizes, so that's my go-to thing for, for cleaning the house. 
peppermint in batches, uh, dried or fresh, either in your cabinets or just strategically placed throughout your house, can deter ants and fleas. So peppermint is probably more known for its respiratory health um, properties, and so that's where I'm going to start with the health of peppermint. Um, we use peppermint a lot when we have colds, flus, sinusitis, um, if you have a cough or bronchitis or anything like that. So number one, it's, it's an anti-inflammatory, so it helps in that way. But the menthol also helps you breathe, and it opens up airways, and it really, um, it really helps clear out that junk that's in you. Peppermint is not only antiseptic, uh, it is also antibacterial, it's an expectorant and a decongestant. All of those things in this tiny little plant, um, which is why I keep it on hand all of the time, because it, it's really, my son had asthma for a few years, thankfully he doesn't have it anymore, but when he did have it, peppermint oil um, and peppermint in this form was a really great way to help treat those um, ailments. Peppermint isn't something new, actually. Um, it was first discovered uh, back in 1000 BC. That's as far back as we can trace it. It was used a lot throughout biblical times. Um, the priests in, in the Bible actually talk about people bringing an offering of peppermint and dill wheat and herbs such as that, and they, they honored those and they really loved those because they were useful. They could use them. Um, so peppermint isn't something new, which means that it's been used throughout centuries, which means um, if you look back, one of the greatest things that it was used for to um, kind of cure, but mostly just help in the process of getting rid of, is tuberculosis. Um, it was proven to be more effective than any other drug that they could give people. Um, so peppermint really helped in that era where tuberculosis was rampant. And those who had peppermint, um, whether in tea form, inhaled, mainly inhaled because it is a respiratory issue. Um, they recovered probably about 60% quicker than the rest of them. Peppermint is also widely known to reduce fevers. We've used peppermint oil to reduce fevers. Um, in many studies, it's been proven to break fevers quicker than it has been to, um, than a Tylenol or ibuprofen has, anything like that, anything with acetaminophen or anything. Um, in many cases, it's been proven to work more effectively than those. Peppermint is also, since it is, again, anti-inflammatory, it's also great for muscle pains and aches and joint pain. Um, it's also wonderful for headaches. I've used peppermint a lot for headaches. Um, peppermint oil or peppermint in a tea or inhaled. Um, it does really well to ease the pain of headaches, joint pain, and any other aches and pains that you might have. If you have muscle pain, you can create a lotion or salve out of peppermint. Um, or you can make an oil out of it, an infused oil yourself, not necessarily an essential oil. Rubbing it on that muscle, um, really getting it into the skin, it helps a lot with joint and muscle pain. So the next portion of peppermint is the digest digestive tract. Um, peppermint is really great if you have indigestion, if you have IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. Um, it helps aid in the gut and the digestion of the gut and um, really helps your digest digestive tract. So um, where peppermint with asthma, it, it does the same thing. It regenerates the lining of the lungs. It also does that with your intestinal tract. So it helps regenerate the lining of your intestines, um, coating everything and getting rid of IBS. IBS is also an inflammation issue, so once again, the anti-inflammatory properties of peppermint help you with IBS. Um, peppermint is really proven to help very much with colic, so if you have an infant with colic, um, peppermint tea or peppermint, uh, normally peppermint tea, it, it's suggested that you ingest it somehow, um, or probably peppermint oil on the abdomen can help tremendously. If you're a pregnant mom and you have nausea, peppermint tea is also one of the greatest uh, counteraction of getting rid of nausea. Um, it's really helpful in that. Once again, coating your stomach, getting that inflammation down, settling your stomach down. It's great for kids who have an upset stomach or who are fighting a stomach bug. It's really good for them as well. Um, I know a lot of us, we, we fear cancer. Um, and one of the 
probably one of the most popular cancers in men is prostate cancer. Um, it, it's something that you know we've had to deal with not here personally but through other family members. Um, peppermint, peppermint has menthol in it, um, which I stated before, but menthol actually inhibits the growth of the prostate cancer cells. Um, it's, it's actually been proven in many tests that they've done. So if you have prostate cancer or you're wanting to prevent it, uh, adding peppermint tea or peppermint in a edible form is really important for you. Um, I would say try it. Give it a try. Uh, you should probably try it for at least a month before really seeing any progress in that. Again, if you're a nursing mom or new mom or soon-to-be nursing mom, peppermint aids in healing cracked skin. If you're a nursing mom, you know exactly what I mean right now. <laughs> so, um, you, I, when I was a nursing mom, it was really hard for me. Um, I had really dry, cracked skin on my breasts from nursing, and. So I really needed something to help calm that, and peppermint was actually one of the things I read back then, and I actually wasn't um, as into all natural medicine then, but it helped, it really helped, and I would actually just take the leaves and make a compress out of them and, and place them directly on my chest. Um, other people can make salves out of them, as I had mentioned before, and oils, and it aids in the quick regeneration of skin um, so that you get rid of that chapness. You can also make, it works for the lips too, you can make chapsticks and stuff out of it, which is why a lot of popular chapstick companies have peppermint, uh, because it aids in that healing process. And once again, inflammatory, uh, it, it's an anti-inflammatory, so it helps with that as well. Along with the other respiratory things, uh, peppermint is great for hay fever, allergies, things like that. Um, I've kind of given you the general rundown because there are so many little things that fall under that um, that I, I don't want to overload you with too much information. So ultimately, as a condensed version, um, peppermint is good for anything digestive. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's antiseptic and antibacterial. Um, it helps regenerate chapped skin, whether on your lips or another part of your body, I would venture to say it's even good for psoriasis and eczema. Um, it helps reduce fever, it helps aches, pains, joint pain, and muscle pain. Respiratory, under the respiratory part, um, cough, flu, fever, sinusitis, asthma, um, any kind of hay fever or anything like that, it falls under the respiratory part of peppermint. Um, IBS, digestive issues, indigestion, nausea, colic is a huge one. Peppermint has menthol, it has anti-inflammatory properties. And last but not least, I, for I forgot to mention this, um, peppermint has actually been proven to enhance memory. Um, I haven't really experienced before, but I would really, I think one of my biggest things would be to try and find someone who's dealing with um, memory loss. So maybe an elderly person who's slowly dealing with that onset of um, Alzheimer's or something. I would love to, to find a study like that. If you know of one, please share it. Um, where peppermint has actually helped help their memory, help enhance it. Um, again, it's, it's the menthol and the anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, when inhaled, for some reason, they all cannot connect and combine. And it helps you uh, remember things and helps your memory become more enhanced. Now, there are certainly a few different ways to take peppermint, and it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. Um, you can, the first way would be in a tea, which is probably the more widely accepted way. Uh, peppermint tea, so steep in it just like you would any other tea leaf or in your tea. Um, you can add it to your tea bags or just crushed up in your tea or a drink of some sort. Um, a, a nice refreshing summer drink is peppermint and cucumber and some other um, vegetables and stuff in water, even citrus in that. So just adding it simply that way is good too. Um, you can create an oil out of it, whether it's an essential oil or just an infused oil. Both work very effectively. Um, I wouldn't suggest trying to make your own essential oil. That would get pretty expensive. But I would buy a quality essential oil if you want to try that. Otherwise, you can infuse the peppermint into any kind of oil um, that you can put on your skin. 
Um, another way is to infuse it into vinegar. As I had said before, I can use it at, to clean my home, um, or you can use it to take shots of. If you drink apple cider vinegar, you can crush up spearmint in that and drink it. Other ways for, I said spearmint, I meant peppermint in one of those. Other ways are to make salves and lotions out of it. Um, I would venture to also say that you could probably make a tincture out of it. I think you can make a tincture out of just about anything. And that is basically just taking the dried herb um, and, and adding a high absolute alcohol to it, like vodka. Um, and I'll link some of those things below to show you how to do that. But all of those ways are very effective. Um, and it's just, you know, kind of depending on what you need it for. If it's for internal use, like digestive tract and prostrate and anything like that, then yes, please take peppermint, not peppermint oil, internally. Um, for anything else, like inhaling, um, would be for the respiratory, obviously. Um, kind of use your common sense. If it's respiratory, you inhale to get it directly into there. If it's digestive, you take it internally. If it's joint and muscle pain or something with your skin, you put it on externally. So those are your three different ways to do that. That's pretty much it about peppermint. It's a lot of information, but I feel like it's a lot of good information, especially for those of you that are trying to um, venture into herbs this year. It's really growing rampant right now. I, If I had a bed right now, I'd put this in a bed and just leave it there, and it grows and it spreads abundantly. Um, you'll never be without peppermint if you plant it. Um, that's about it. I'm going to have some more of these. Um, I am, I've actually had some suggestions on this about, you know, kind of breaking down each herb, and I feel like I can more effectively tell you about each herb in one video rather than trying to fit them all in one video. I'll do one video for each, so if there's a particular herb that you've been wondering about, um, please do comment below and tell me, and I hope to get a video made probably once a week for the herbs that we use, and then I'll dive into new herbs as I expand my knowledge. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy homesteading. Thank you.